I said something to the effect of most people think of social engineering as the, the government will get me to do things I don't want to do. So they think of it in terms of coercion and compliance. Take the jab, eat mm. the bugs, live in the bod, pod, get the, the sub, subcutaneous chip. But what I, my view of social engineering is literally the bottom up construction of a replacement demographic. So we're talking about from the fetus to to uh, I wish I had a clever way to end that analogy from the fetus to I, I don't know, the 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 judge seat to the head of law enforcement to Fox News, whatever you, you created the people from the ground up by decimating the the actual social infrastructure that they already had. So. I really don't like this phrase bio Leninism because I think implicitly at the bottom are losers and you're just marshalling these losers. And they, I think we're going to tend to be already ugly, stupid, maladaptive, what, uh, prone to violence or criminality. Uh, and so the bio is already implicit there. Um, but the reason I bring that up is you, if, if you want to go with that phrase bio Leninism, then we can take that a step further and saying that through, for example, the, uh, the continent-wide implementation of a program of uh, uh, um, sexual impropriety, whether that's through divorce or um, uh, having flings, cheating, uh, that kind of thing, you break down the family. I mean, this is like elementary stuff. I'm not telling the audience anything that they don't know. Or, or never getting married at all, of course. Right, right. But you yeah. break down the family so – and you break down the community. We know that E. Michael Jones has written about this tremendously. You break down people's ability to define themselves, to associate amongst that self-defined population. And you take away their language, you take away their education, you, you take away all these kinds of things, which they have done. And what's left, like you said, freaks and losers, um, disaffected, maladapt, alienated. And, and this is where I get a little bit sympathetic because you're talking about people that have had this done to them. There's a very strong right-wing tendency to, to kind of condemn these people just sight unseen. You are always losers, so on and so forth, a kind of vulgar Nietzscheanism that I don't really ascribe to. I think when you look out at America, yeah, we can say people have been allowed to reproduce that who shouldn't be allowed to. That's part of the social engineering, by the way. But more importantly, um, all of these people could be operating at a higher level if these if this sp specific political program wasn't implemented to dispossess and alienate them. So when people say things like, oh, I can't believe how many women support abortion, or I can't believe how many people support um, ch child drag story hour, or whatever the hell they call mm -hmm. it, pick any culture war issue that is obviously beyond the pale, horrific, anti-human, anti-life, nihilistic, et cetera. That only is possible because the, to get a little philosophical, like that, that subjectivity has been crowned by the state. We want that kind of person. We want people who think this way. We want people who have these kinds of values. We want people who socialize in these kinds of ways. How do they get that? Well, you have to break the existing social order and then introduce your own. And that's, um, that's what we have. And even with that being said, you know, I'm still not sold that they've accomplished everything that they'd like us to think that they've accomplished. I think it's a lot. It's a big time confidence game that they're running on us. Um, and and while there's a lot of proof to corroborate that, um, this is something really we're talking less than 100 years that they've been at this aggressively. And we, that's just not enough time, I think, even at the rate that they're pushing. Uh, it's not enough to start going, you know, chicken little and pulling the hair out of your head. Well, I mean, the I, I'm just looking at the, the recent American transgender stats and between 2017 and 2022, so five years, the trans youth population has doubled. It's gone from being 0.7% of 18 to 24 year olds now it's 1.4 percent sorry 1.4 percent of 13 13 to 17 year olds and 1.3 percent of 18 to 24 year olds identify as transgender so we're talking like just more than one in a hundred which is quite a lot um 
But the, you see, the thing that disturbs me more is not these, it's not so much the full on, you know, I identify as transgender. It's actually like the, the average man or the average woman. Because, it, I mean, it strikes me that just the normal 18 or 19 year old woman, for example, is masculine. And the normal, I mean, my, my, my wife just casually said to me the other day, she said, is it just me or like young men like getting gayer? Like, are they getting more effeminate? You know, they seem, um, it, it, it really does seem like the distinction between the genders is blurring at a, like a really basic level. Um, I'm, not, I'm not talking about transgenderism now. I'm talking about like, you know, quote unquote, straight men and straight women. You know, taking on, uh, you know, masculine traits if they're female or more feminine traits if they're uh, if they're male, um, and it, you know, it, it, it's it's difficult not to think of uh, someone like uh, who was that uh, Russian CIA dude again? I always forget his name now. Uh, Yuri Bezmenov or someone like that. You know, it does it does make you think like they, they've really done a number um, on the population and. Like you said, it hasn't been long. 